Welcome to module six of the series Fire Department Billing for Ambulance Services. My name is Brad Pinsky, and we are here again on Pinsky Law Presents. And today we're going to talk about educating the public. This is a quick video. It's important. What we normally do is we would provide you slides for your public, but we also have drafted letters to be published or distributed uh, in media or on your website. So you can really give a long detailed explanation of what you're going to do to the public so that they do not worry. So without further ado, let's get right into this. So you want to gain public support. More than that, you don't want to be hung out on a tree by your public. So your public is going to have this impression. They're going to say, we pay you taxes. Why do we need to be billed for ambulance services? Well, I think you have to first understand a couple of things. One is in 2008, the law was changed to require that HMOs and insurance companies cover emergency ambulance services. This was not always the case, right? This is pretty new, relatively speaking. So what do you think probably happened when the insurance companies are told, oh, you got to, you know, cover this whole new service? Well, what probably happened was they went to the New York State Insurance Department, as they're required to do, and they got a raise. They got an increase. They increased the premiums of all their insureds to now account for the fact that they have to pay for emergency ambulance transports. Well, so everybody's already been paying, but everybody who's transported by a fire department ambulance up to this point has been just giving it away for free, right? They've been paying in their premiums or their employers pay in their premiums, but what happens? The insurance company's not paying anything out. So finally, it's time to be fair, hence the Fair Play Act. So. Anyone who's complaining, oh, but our premiums are going to go up. No, that already happened. They also may say, well, why are we paying you both taxes and billing money? Well, the answer to that is what you do with the money. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But the short thing is, look, we can reduce the tax levy and increase services. We could do both, or we just increase services, or we just lower tax money, whatever you want to do. But they're getting the benefit. And if you go back to the prior module, there's a way, a legal way, to avoid co-payments in many circumstances. So your argument to them will be, listen, this isn't going to cost you anything more anyway, because we're not coming you after you for your co-payments. Now, yes, deductibles, they may have a deductible, but as we talked about back then, the deductible is going to be charged either or both by the hospital or you. They're going to pay the deductible when they go to the hospital, most likely. So these are things we need to tell to the public to calm them down. There's not going to be any harm if you have insurance your insurance gets billed and hopefully we can legally deal with the co-payments. But if you have no insurance, the law prohibits billing. So almost everybody has insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, Child Health Plus, Champus, the veterans programs, workers comp, no fault, employer provided, right? State insurance plans. There's so many insurance programs out there, even what, uh, is remaining from Obama, right? For employees of uh, 50 and over, uh, those businesses have to provide the Obamacare equivalent. So there really isn't any harm to residents. If you have no insurance, you're not getting bills. Now, if you have a high deductible, how do we respond to that? Listen, most likely we're a charitable entity, especially if the fire department corporation, the membership corporation is providing services. We're a charitable care entity. Don't worry. If you have financial hardship, we can address it. So we already talked about co-payments, and so I'm not going to get into this any more than say, go back and look at the module, module three on legally waiving or assuming co-payments. But again, I, you know, you, you just can't stand up and say, oh, we're soft billing or we're only accepting insurance only. Please don't do that. Please go back and watch that other module for a much more detailed description of how to legally waive or assume or avoid co-payments. So. If you have 
any questions or you're in need of any assistance, please let us know. We have written so many letters on behalf of districts and departments already, uh, helping them educate the members. We can provide you PowerPoint lectures. We're even willing to come down and speak to your public as we've done so many times and help them understand this is good for them. This is fair for them. This will be good for the taxpayers. This will be good for emergency services, maybe lower taxes, but definitely better services, better equipment. Maybe we don't have to bond for an ambulance because we'll use the billing money. This is good. If you've got any questions or comments, please send them our way. And we are going to create a module eight containing all your questions. And that way we can help share your questions and the answers with everybody. That's it for this module and Pinsky Law Presents. We'll see you at the next one.